welcome back to IP Farms. Well, it's another beautiful day here in North Carolina. The sun's shining, the birds are chirping, uh, upper 60s, uh, beautiful weather. The wind's kind of low for right now. Let's hope that stays that way. Um, I want to say up front, uh, this video is probably going to be a little bit longer than most of my normal ones. I'm going to try to get as much as I can since the wind is low today and going back. I know I've gone over several things on the injection pump already uh, in the second part of the video, or part two rather but we're gonna to try to detail as much as we possibly can and I'm gonna bring you guys along for all of it. You know, when we go to crank it up for the first time, if things go haywire, you're gonna see it. Um, that way, if anybody watches this, they'll know what not to do. Uh, huge thank you to Mr. Bruce today for uh, getting me the O-rings that I needed from the Case IH dealer locally around him. Uh, Bruce is a super nice guy. Um, got a YouTube channel on the day homestead. Um, been a little bit since he posted some videos. He's got some super nice tractors, but Bruce is just all around a wonderful person, a great help, and a, a wonderful friend. Um, I gave him some hodgepodge information off the tractor and the injection pump, and he tracked down the rings that I need. I've got the bottom one, and I've got the top one that's causing all the problems. Uh, they are a little bit different than what came in the kit, um, so I'm not real sure one way or the other, but you know, these were for, especially for it, and ordered separate, not in the kit, so we're gonna go with that. So Bruce, if you're watching this, hopefully you are. Thank you very much. Um, I, I just, I can't say thank you enough. Uh, this is awesome. I've been waiting on these. They finally came in um, and getting time to get back on it. We've gotta get this unit back together and get down in the fields. Um, you know, I've got most everything else wrapped up, you know, oil pressure gauge, amp gauge. I do have a fuel uh, inlet hose from the fuel filters down to the pump itself that needs to be replaced. It's not leaking or anything, but um, there's some issues about what type of line it needs to be. So I'm going to go ahead and order that and get that in here. But um, anyway, you know, everybody keep their fingers crossed and let's hope this goes well. Um, you guys will be the first to see it along with me. So we're going to give it a shot. I'm going to try my best to get it back together today. I'm not sure if I'll get it cranked up on this video or not, but if I do, I do, but just keep in mind it's probably going to be a little bit longer than normal. You all know how much I talk anyway, so I waste half the video time just blabbing, but um, we're going to try to get as much work as we can on video for everybody. Let's get started. Okay, everybody, we're going to try this. It says apply a thin, layer, thin coat of grease to the bottom O-ring <clears throat> that goes on the bottom of the hydraulic head. So that's what I'm doing now. I don't know how good you can see, but uh, here's the O-ring. So got a light coat of grease on it. it. Says put it down in the housing. Make sure that it's centered in the housing, which it is. And we've got the O-ring already on the uh, hydraulic head. Like I said before, you've got a little notch right here. It lines up with a notch back here on the pump and of course we've got our mark here on the gear so let's see what happens I'm gonna pull it back out so it does not jihan here. See, it's got free travel and it should have the free travel in it before it hits resistance when you get it in there. I'm probably doing something wrong. But we're not gonna give up. That's close, but it's not exactly what I need. Thank you. 
Well. That's her right there. The mark here on the bottom is lined up with the face gear. And my notch is lined up up there. Okay, you've all seen me struggle. I'm gonna leave that clip on there. I warned all of you that it'd be a longer video, so we're gonna go with it. I got the Allen bolt started back. You have to move the pump a little bit. It hits these injection nipples. Uh, one way or the other to get the, all the Allens to start. And keep in mind that uh, according to the book, these bottom out, that's not like a, you tighten up. I mean, they bottom out. That's why everybody thinks that when they're leaking here that you can tighten these Allens up, but with the shoulders on them like they are, uh, they just basically bottom out and that O-ring seal. So we're just trying to pull them down a little bit at a time. And hopefully that o-ring rolls right in there like it's supposed to i did put a little uh grease on that i forgot to say that in the earlier clip it doesn't say to but just some lubrication for the o-ring to slide so it doesn't bind up i don't own a uh ratchet allen i should i should have got one for it but like i said everybody keep your fingers crossed i don't know i just if i mess it up i mess it up it should be timed basically number one the way you would send it off uh, with a tractor and putting the head back in with the marks lined up the pointer in here like i said earlier in the pointer over there is where it's supposed to be so we're going to give it a shot let me finish tightening these up and i'll take my gloves off and show you the mark in the housing here like i was talking about okay we'll try this uh replace the o-ring here this is the governor plunger i think they call it but anyway it tells you to go in with this at three o'clock which puts the back tab at the lowest position at six o'clock so we're gonna see if we can get this started in there Ow, pinch my finger. That gum it. Okay. That went in. This is at three o'clock, which puts the other one at six o'clock. That's what it tells us to do. So now we're going to it just kind of folds down. I guess once it's in that groove, according to what I read. Put the control rod back in there. And then we'll get these started. And there's a spec for this. I gotta get my filler gauges and I'll get that lined up where it needs to be and then I'll bring you back. Well, I'm not gonna end it yet. Anyway, that should be it. That's the control rod plunger, which is the governor. This tab right here, we gotta get a measurement behind the control rod itself. To see how tight it holds everything in we put a new o-ring in there we got the new o-rings here i've already tightened injector lines up i tightened the head nut up here back up instead of loosening that prior which i didn't tear it down that far so i had to tighten that back up mark's still good here mark's good back there i didn't show you that well anyway the marks are lined up right here just like i showed you the other day that they had to be and then these tabs up here line up so i don't know that should be it i've got to clean this up a little bit put the new gasket on there after i uh tighten that up to the spec with a filler gauge i think it's uh five thousand something like that i don't know i'm not good with that i read it while i go but i can't remember i get that back on there put the plug back in and prime it up with fuel and i don't know i'll give it a shot i reckon bring it back in a minute okay everybody well we got everything back together got the cover back on the tie wire inside i adjusted the um, um 
plunger back and plate if you will with the uh, specs I'll drop all that in the link of this in the description of this video uh, what the specs are and uh, what the part numbers are on the o-rings too um, I know the video has got long already uh, like I said that was just monotonous cleaned everything up uh, got it primed up got the water and antifreeze in it um, take you around this side right quick try not to get too long-winded um, I do have the uh, intake hose off the turbo here you see that um, couldn't get a board in there so I found this uh, four inch rain cap um, that went on the loader at one point in time so I can fish that down in there uh, if something were to go haywire but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot I don't think I've got enough battery they haven't been charging very long um, and like I said I really don't want to do this with one person but I think I took the uh, <laughs> door off a second ago so i think i can reach in there the switch and be close enough for something where to go haywire if it does crank so let me get you set up and we'll give it a whirl if the batteries are dead or it doesn't want to do or whatever i'm gonna have to wrap this video up and we'll just have to make it a part four and see if we can get it running in but cross your fingers everybody okay everybody well this isn't the clip you were planning to see after the last one but um dummy me uh put the battery charger on it when i got here this afternoon you know, did all the work, tried to bring you guys along for as much as I could. Uh, set the camera up there, hit the button, went to hit the switch, and it rolled over about a half around, dead as a doornail. I don't understand what happened until I walked in the shop. I forgot to plug the drop cord in. Imagine that. So it's been sitting here all afternoon with the battery charger on it, thinking it's charging, and no power to the charger. You hear the generator running in the back. Uh, I use that to uh, charge on eight amps on one side of the batteries. I guess I just need to break down and go ahead and replace them now with all the rest of these uh, repairs I've been doing. But anyway, we're going to have to make it in four parts. Hopefully it'll be three parts repair and one part getting it running if it cranks. But, uh, you know, I tried to bring it along as much as I could today, uh, show you the basics of it. I've said a lot of it in videos before. So, you know, feel free if you've got any questions or concerns or anything like that. Uh, if I can remember it, I'm going to put the uh, part numbers to the o-rings and everything uh in the description of the video i think i said that earlier maybe i don't know it's a long afternoon but uh trying to get my dad to throw it on charge tomorrow and hopefully when i get up here we can uh see if we can get it fired up so please hang in there with me and uh if we get this fixed up like it's supposed to be then get back to using it and i think that'll wrap up the repair videos for a little while other than the building so uh get back to work finally anyway thank you everybody for watching uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, you know, hit the thumbs up button if you like what you see, thumbs down, I understand it's not for everybody. Um, share the video, get it out there, might be somebody else interested in some of this stuff, you know, it's either going to be an epic fail and everybody will know what not to do, or it's going to be a tutorial and might be somebody can try to uh, repair themselves like I did, but, you know, time will tell. So, uh, I think that'll do it. Uh, just really appreciate everybody. Sorry this was a little bit longer than normal. I want to bring it along as much as I could, but we'll see what tomorrow brings. Until next time, thank you.